So I did a poll to figure out what you wanted to see next, and many of you chose the Glock 45, so here it is. As always, you can find this build on my new website's kit in the description with links to everything. The original kit website I used previously would restrict what I could post, so I built my own website so I could link whatever I wanted. Now why did I go with a Glock 45? Why not a 19 or a 17? Well, there's three main reasons. Number one, the 45 size made sense with the way I plan to carry and train with it. Number two, Glock's reliability and safety, and three, in my opinion, it's the perfect hybrid between two fantastic guns. But let's go over the build so you can see what parts I used and why. Starting on the slide, I have a true precision barrel, which I kind of have a mixed opinion on. I personally think there are better barrels out there for around the same price, like Faxon, but I also have recently fell in love with Silencer Co's barrels because they are priced really well and very well made. I mean, true precision still makes a really good barrel. I would just consider the other options that are on the market like Silencer Co. The sights are the XS DX2 Suppressor High Irons. These are some of my favorite iron sights on the market right now and I highly recommend them. I love the way they look, how easily they line up, and overall the attention to detail and build quality. The tritium on these glow really really well and it's really not distracting, I would just call it perfect. XS includes all of the tools you need to install and it's a super simple process that I'm not allowed to show you on YouTube. But overall XS really does make some super solid solid iron sights. I'm running them on this build and also my 43X if you've seen that video. At some point I'm probably going to cut the slide for a Trigicon or, or maybe the new EOTech Red Dot. We'll see which one I like more. I'm running the Harrington Arms HC9C 3.0 compensator and this thing's the actual goat of this build. It took forever for me to find a comp that I love the look of as well as one that functioned as advertised. Harrington Arms attention to detail and build quality are very appealing to me and I'm just stoked they made exactly what I wanted for this build. Recoil is very much reduced while shooting and this thing is super aesthetically pleasing. If you haven't run a comp before, go pick one of these up. I highly recommend you try it out at least. I think you'll really like it. The light of course is an X300U version B. This is one of the best lights out there. Anybody who runs these knows they're incredibly bright and well built. Not to mention the endless holster options available for them. They take Surefire's 123A batteries and I use the rechargeable ones because I'm a big rechargeable advocate. Non-rechargeables are a waste of money in my opinion. And if you can't find the rechargeable ones anywhere, go to my kit because I have linked a site that you most likely didn't know had them. And they're always in stock. I did throw in a Zev trigger bar just to make the pull a little smoother. I mean, in comparison to my Johnny Glock's trigger kit in my 43X MOS, this is just sad, but I guess it does make a little bit of a difference. I do have quite a few extensions for my OEM mags, two from Tyrant Designs and the other from Strike Industries because I wanted to see what the hype was, and these are really inexpensive. It turns out they're pretty sweet. So far, I'm a big fan and they have been very reliable. And I also did a little stipple on these because they're polymer and just to match the grip a little bit better. I have been using Using these Tyrant Designs Plus 5s for several months now and surprisingly they have never failed. Very impressed with Tyrant Designs so far with their build quality and reliability. I did throw on a Talon grip because I love these and on top of that I wrapped some goon tape for a little extra grip and sweat absorption. Mostly because with these rubber Talon grips, even though they do have a good amount of grip if your hand gets sweaty, you can't really do anything about that. So the goon tape really does come in handy for that. I just recently found these goon tape guys and I love their brand, tried their product and and I'm super happy with it. Even though it's really just tape, you can tell they're a small business because they sent me a handwritten note with the package. It's just nice to see, you know, it's the little things. Last thing on this build is an SLR Magwell that I absolutely love. Incredible build quality and design. Very strong, very impressed overall with what SLR has done. They do have quite a few options for this build, like ones with half moon cuts, but this was the exact look I was going for, and it really does function perfectly for me. I can highly recommend this one. So that's the build, everything else is OEM, and this gun runs flawlessly. You probably know that the 45 is a hybrid between the 19 slide and the 17's grip. When I held this gun for the first time, it was literally just perfect. I went in originally looking for a Gen 5 19, not even knowing that the 45 existed. The guys at the gun store I was in said, we don't have any Gen 5 19's, but we do have 45's in flat dark earth. And I was like, well, let me see it. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm filling out paperwork and walking out with the 45. 
and I don't regret it for a second. I'm actually super glad that they introduced me to this gun because I just didn't know. For me, being able to have the 19 slide and adding a compensator, making it like essentially a 17's length. If I would have bought the 17, then the compensator would have just been too long. I originally wanted a 17 because the grip was the exact size that I wanted, but the length of the slide would have been too long to run a comp on. And the 19's grip for me was just a little bit too small, but the slide length was perfect. After shooting over a thousand rounds so far, this is ultimately one of my favorite handguns I've ever shot. Smooth, consistent, and reliable. Surprisingly, I've never had a jam, never had a malfunction, never worried it wouldn't perform. And yeah, you're probably like, you've only shot a thousand rounds through it. Well, yeah but that's a thousand perfect rounds, which is pretty sweet in my opinion. And you really don't get that with every gun, especially one that you've like added parts to. Now, I obviously have a ton of great things to say about the 45, but are there any drawbacks to concealing it or using it in general? For me, surprisingly, no, and here's why. In my opinion, carrying a gun appendix style is really something you just get used to. It's dependent on your clothing style, the weather, and overall comfortability. I don't really care how big the gun is. I just want to be confident with whatever I'm carrying because that's the point, right? Luckily, my clothing style allows me to conceal bigger guns, which is what I'm more confident with, but it's just different for everybody. So is it a hassle to conceal? Well, it depends on what I'm wearing that day, but that's why I have my 43X so I can switch off. I have been using tier one concealed's Access Elite to appendix carry this. It fits super snug, and honestly, the compensator isn't even as tall as the light is, so I really don't even notice it. I've concealed this gun a pretty good amount, and it's really a huge difference between my 43X, obviously in size, but this is really the gun that I feel the most confident with, so I try to carry it when I can. Tier one honestly did a great job for having these open-ended holsters that allow you to carry compensators, and overall design-wise, they made a really comfortable appendix carry option for larger guns like this. So great job, Tier 1. I also want to talk for a second about T-Rex Arms holster. I carry this on my hip when I train at the range. Uh, this holster is called the Ragnarok. It's a super solid Kydex holster that clips in with Safari Land mounts. It's a two-piece setup. The receiver goes around your belt, attaches to your hip, and then there's a leg strap that goes with it to keep it stable, and then you just connect it using the fork. I can highly recommend T-Rex Arms. They make great holsters. It fits my compensator really well. The pressure point is on the light, so you cannot run these without the light. Not that you would, because you literally buy the version of the holster according to the light that you have. T-Rex Arms also makes a version that's open cut here, and so you can throw your suppressor on and train the same draw pattern that you would as if you were running a holster just like this, which I think is really innovative and super cool. So I really love their stuff. They make a great training and just carry in general holster. My final thoughts are, if I could go back and had the choice between a Gen 5, Glock 17, 19, or 45, I still would pick the 45. Not that those other two options are bad, they're honestly both incredible, but the 45 met all of my needs. That's it. If you want me to go in depth on any of the parts I used, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.